Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News. And the first big thing that happened this week was of course the first episode of Witch from Mercury. But first, a new month means a new Gumpla schedule, which consists almost entirely of Witch from Mercury kits. On the first we got the high grade Gundam Ariel for 1430 yen, around 10 US, and I can tell you mine is currently flying towards me. Um, on the 8th then, um, you were supposed to be able to get some target practice for your aerial in the form of Gules de Lanza for 1760 and 12 US, uh, but apparently it already got released today. On the 15th, you can get another Gundam aerial, but this time from the SDX standard line for 660 and 4 US, and you can also get the aerial's adorably awesome pilot, the Figure Rise Standard Suleta Mercury for 3520 and 25 US. And if that horror doesn't convince you to get her, that smile surely will. And finally, uh, the one non Witch from Mercury kit is the SDW Heroes Dark Grasper Dragon for 770 and 5 US that releases on the 29th. And you can, of course, still pre order all of these kits and more over at Hobbling Japan. And right now, they actually just kicked off their Halloween event, where every shipment will include a nice treat a coupon for either a discount on your next order or for free shipping on your next order. And in addition to Gundam, they of course also have a bunch of other cool stuff too, like this really nice Zenith from Front Mission. I did already have the desert version, but I liked it so much that I also wanted the original urban camo version. And with the first two games getting a remaster soon on the Switch, this little guy is perfect to get me in the right mood. Links for everything down below. And you know what also put me in the right mood? The first episode of Witch from Mercury. After an extremely powerful start with the prologue, the regular series was off to an equally great start, but in a somewhat different way. Whereas the prologue was still more standard Gundam, the main series moves away from this uh, with its school setting. And while just that isn't unseen in Gundam, in combination with the fact that there is no real war going on or like outward conflict, and that there's not even a real enemy in sight, uh, I did feel that the series was very different compared to previous Gundam series. Yes, there is definitely some really serious stuff going on with the big companies, and we even see an assassination attempt that was foiled, but which from Mercury overall felt much more light for the main characters. And while some people might find it disappointing that it's not another gritty Gundam from the get-go, I think it's definitely a good idea to have a Gundam series set in a high school with corporate corruption. Because while I was watching, the whole thing really felt like a breath of fresh air. Another thing then that made me very excited was seeing the great animation and sound design from the prologue carry over. The fight between Suleta and Gul was epic, and the way there was this little pause before the gun bits completely tore Gul's machine apart was perfect. Uh, the only thing that I've seen so far that made me a little worried uh, was how powerful Suleta was in combination with her Gundam Ariel. Basically, the thing had the power of a mid-season or season 2 upgrade Gundam, but in the first episode, and Suleta is also already very competent with the thing. She was completely capable of controlling the funnels, well, gun bits, how she wanted. Again, something you would expect to see near the end of the series. And then to make matters worse, she completely steamrolled the Academy's top ace pilot, who was also using a custom unit. So I do hope they find like an organic way to keep the story going without Suleta being overpowered from the first second. That being said, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't thoroughly enjoy the scene. 
which is also why I'm not too worried yet. So yeah, I am definitely looking forward to seeing how the series is going to evolve and how the relationships are going to evolve. Like, how is Gyul gonna go from here and how is Delling going to react when he learns about the entire situation between Mirene and Suleta? Because let's not forget that he's the big bad guy who was against the Gundams and now his daughter is in a relationship with a Gundam pilot because of something that he set in motion. I really want to see how this plays out and I also really hope that Miorine doesn't go down the cyber new type path, which is something that we have seen with the love interests of several Gundam protagonists. And continuing with the Witch from Mercury news, Bandai is going full steam ahead and released an online novel to kind of bridge the gap between the prologue and the series, of course linked down below. Now it is only in Japanese at the moment, officially, but I did also come across a fan translation, which I'll of course also have linked down below. And I highly encourage you to check it out, because it definitely adds a darker edge to the series. Uh, it's seen through the eyes of the Ariel, and the machine acknowledges that both him and Suleta are basically tools of their mother's revenge. So I really wonder how that's going to come into play in the series later on. The official music video of the intro song got released and is as awesome as expected and is also linked down below. Uh, Cospaccio has announced that they'll be releasing official cosplays of Suleta and Miorina's uniforms, on which we'll get more information soon. In Japan, Witch from Mercury is getting its own radio program called as the Cassia School of Technology Radio Committee and is hosted by the voice actors of Suleta and Miorine. There's this pretty nice prize figure of Suleta by Banpresto, and while the face isn't quite right, it is still much better compared to some of the last Gundam figures that I saw. Then a bunch of other things were unveiled that we'll be releasing later on in the month. There is acrylic clips, desk mats, stickers, can badges, sketchbooks, and these adorable little rubber keychains that you can get from Gachapon machines for 300 yen a spin to US. And I wonder how many times I'm gonna have to retry to get a Suleta, Miorine, and Choo Choo. Moving on, they also showed the cover of the limited edition of the opening single, which is going to come with two included Gunpla. The aerial looks like it's just going to have extra stickers, but the Demi Trainer is going for a completely different color scheme, and I am totally digging the cyberpunky vibe that it's got going on with those blues and the neon lights on it. Um, as for what's on the disc, that has also been disclosed. It is the regular full version, the full version but in English, the anime cut used for the opening song, and the full instrumental version. And then finally, we got some more information on some characters and mobile suits. Rajan Zahi is a talented subordinate of Delling, who belongs to Cathedral, and just like him, he also used to be in uh, the military. Lada Neil is a third year piloting student and belongs to the Jeturk dorm. He's also Gil's younger half brother and unlike him, he is calm and rational, or so they say. Uh, Felsi Rollo is a second year piloting student who also belongs to the Jeturk dorm and doesn't think too much about the future. She also looks up to Gil as a pilot, which had to hurt at the end of the first episode, and she's not the only one. Uh, Petra is a second year mechanic who belongs to the Jeturk house and admires Gyul just as much. Other than that, she is described as having a cool demeanor and as being the intelligent honor student type. But from what I saw in the first episode, I would describe her Felsi and Lauda with the same word that I'd use for Gyul, a jerk. Uh, Cecilia Dote then um, is a business strategy student who belongs to the Burion house and is a member of the dueling committee. 
but more importantly, she's a cynic, a master of sarcasm, and she also has a really cool design. So definitely looking forward to seeing more of her in the series. And then finally, we have Ruji Chante, another member of the Burian House and the Dueling Committee. He's a student of the mechanical department and is therefore very knowledgeable about mobile suits and other machines, and he always carries around his custom Haro. As for the mobile suits then, the information on the Ariel regular Delonza and Gil's custom Delonza doesn't really add anything new, except for the fact that it confirms that Gil's Delonza is in fact magenta and not red as someone yelled in the series. Uh, the Zawart then can fly independently thanks to its large propulsion unit and the Hindry is confirmed to be a mass production unit. Continuing with the Gunpla news then, and first up we have two kits that I forgot to talk about last week because, well, a lot of stuff was released last week. Uh, there was the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette Tornado Gundam, which at the moment is just this announcement and this prototype, and there was also the High Grade Gundam Engage, which last week was also just an announcement, but by now we have gotten all of the details. And that is because on Wednesday, reservations opened over at P Bandai. At 2,750 yen, around 20 US, it is relatively expensive for what we're getting though. Two beam sabers with effect parts, a standard beam rifle and shield, an optional booster pack and five hands. And while we do also get an action base with the set, I don't feel like it quite justifies the price. But it is definitely an interesting take on the original Gundam design, and I especially like how the legs feel like they crossbred the Kempfer and the GPO-1. And if you want one for yourself, it'll be releasing in January. Moving on then, something that I did not see coming is the high-grade gun cannon Kukuru's the Wands Island version. After taking a short break from uh, Kukuru's the Wands Island Gunpla, it seems like Bandai is back in the game, pushing all of them out now. But of course, because it is a Kukuru's the Wands Island Gunpla, that means that it's going to be... not a premium Bandai kit? So, okay, I am now completely at a loss. The two main ones of your big movie are P. Bandai, and this one isn't? Like, I'm happy that it's a P. Bandai, but I'm just really confused about it. And more details on this thing uh, will be coming at a later date. Two more Cougars the Wands Islands kits that they announced then are the Jim Moroccan Front Spec and the Zaku 2 High Mobility Type Char Asnabal Custom. Of both, we just have this image of their painted prototype, and on the name card, it doesn't explicitly say if they're P Bandai or not, but I do fear for the worst since they're right next to another batch of P Bandai stuff. And talking about P Bandai, the High Grade Gundam TR6 Wound Ward Psycho Blade Custom Advance of Zeta Reboot version. The coloring is that of the Titans' Black Hair Special Forces, and it comes with new leg parts to match the Black Hair version, and so that you can hook it up to the Barzam, Advance of Zeta Reboot version. And the other big difference is of course the very ornate V-Fin. But if you prefer, it does also still come with the regular one. It's currently scheduled for a January release, and it'll set you back 2,640 yen, 19 US. Over at Gundam Site F Fukuoka then, we got the high-grade Jagan Yu Kajima Custom. And I really don't think that the blue of the chest matches with the rest of the machine. I think I prefer to keep Yu Kajima in the standard Jagan. But if you do like it, or you just want all of the Jagans, it can be yours on October the 8th for 1980 yen, 16 US. 
Moving on to the Gundam base then, where you'll soon be able to purchase the clear color high grade Lefrith for 1540 yen, 11 US, and the high grade Gundam base limited Gundam Astray Red Dragon for 3740 yen, 26 US. A pretty hefty price for a high grade, but it does come with a lot of stuff. It's got a beam effect for the V-Fin, three transformable Clet Witches, and because it's a remold of the fly type, it also still comes with its standard equipment like the beam rifle, shield, flight backpack with detachable wings, Gerbera straight, two sets of beam effect parts, and the Baku reconnaissance head. And both of these will be releasing on October 8th. And last but not least, it has been announced that the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam will be releasing on October the 19th, and they also showed us some of the extra stuff that it'll come with. There's water slides, etching stickers, metallic 3D stickers, and a paper craft runner stand. So you can organize your runners while you're building it. And I do hope that the cardboard they're using for this is pretty sturdy so that you can keep using it for a long time afterwards. Because I can definitely see people, me included, using this for quite a while. And if figures are more your thing, then you were equally satisfied this week. With, without a doubt, the craziest thing being the Mega Cat Project Mobile Suit Gundam Nyandem. This was announced a while back and it is finally coming to fruition. For 770 yen a pop, around 5 US, you can get Omro Ray, Kai Shiden, Sailor Mass, Bright Noah, Matilda Aeon, the RX-782 Gundam, the Gun Cannon or the Gun Tank, as cats. They'll be releasing in late May 2023 and if you get the set from P Bandai for 6160 yen, 43 US, you'll also get a cat Haro and a food tray as bonus. Um, and also releasing in May then are the next Gundam Military Generation sets. The first one being Omro and Frau. Omro himself actually looks surprisingly good, including his proportions, which haven't always been the greatest with this line. And he comes with two different heads, Screaming and Normal, four sets of hands, a pistol, a horo, and the V Project Manual. Something that then allows you to recreate the famous opening scene of Gundam, if you also got the cockpit that was included with the previous three sets. Also, pointer for the people making the promotional images, it doesn't really look good when you make it obvious that you stuck the manual to the hand with blue tack. You can see it creeping out of the crevices between the fingers. But anyways, Fraubo. She doesn't move at all, technically meaning that she should have the best proportions. But as with a lot of Gundam figures lately, the head makes it feel more like someone cosplaying as Frau rather than Frau herself. As for her accessories, uh, you can either have her hold her bag or the Haro by replacing the left arm. And this entire set can be yours for 8,250 yen, 57 US. Uh, the second set then consists of a buggy and a female Earth Federation soldier. She comes with three sets of hands, a backpack, binoculars with attached hand and a rifle, and as a bonus feature, if you got the uh, normal suit Sailor figure, you can also put her head on this body to make yourself a Sailor figure in her normal uniform. And this set goes for 10,450 yen, 73 US. Or if you just want the buggy, it'll only set you back 7,150 yen, 50 US, and you'll also get a jerry can and a rack to put on it. Still pretty expensive for what you're getting in my opinion, especially with the lack of attention to detail. The back of the chairs are just hollow and the wheels don't spin. The only feature it does have is that the wheels can fold down to enter in its flying mode. But if you must have everything, there's also the combo set that you can get at P Bandai, which for 18,700 yen, 130 US, 
comes with Omro, Frau, the female soldier, the buggy, all of their normal accessories, and also some P Bandai exclusive accessories. Uh, which are the cloak that Omro wore when he deserted in the desert, and a little action base for the buggy in flight mode. Or you can use that money to buy the Metal Robot Spirits KA Signature, signature Side MS New Gundam Mass Production Type, which is also exactly 18,700 yen, 130 US. And for that price, we're getting two movable beam cannons that can also double as giant beam sabers with beam effect parts, a small backup beam saber on the back skirt with beam effect part, a beam spray gun, a beam rifle, a shield, and of course the big eye catcher of this figure for deployable incomes with four different wires to have them flying all over the place. And of course, to round things up, it also comes with extra hands and a pedestal to put it on. Reservations started on the 3rd and it is currently slated for a March release. And the other metal robot spirits, the Altron, went up for pre-order last week, Friday. Then for the normal robot spirits figures, Garma's Zaku 2 and Magella Attack Set version anime has been announced, with more details coming later on in the month but we can already tell quite a bit from the picture. Um, it'll come with the Magella Top Cannon, Garma's Custom Dop, and the Magella Attack will come with effect parts to have the top half fly away. What we do already have more information on then is the Robot Spirits Side MS RX-78 GP-04G Gundam Gerbera. For 8,250 N, 57 US, it comes with three removable Sturm boosters, a beam rifle with extra magazines and effect part, uh, two beam sabers with effect parts, thruster effect parts, and extra hands. And it's currently scheduled to go on sale in March. And then if you want some decals specifically made for your Robot Spirits figures, Hobby Japan released a book dedicated to the Robot Spirits version anime figures, that also comes with an exclusive slide of waterside decals for 4,950 yen, 35 US. In the gaming news then, the Zaku 4 joins the fight in Gundam Battle Operation 2, Gundam Breaker Mobile got a race event, a multi-mission where you phase off against the Hosh Mall, an event mission with the Barbs, a step-up gacha for the 5-star Riggsy Custom, and they're celebrating Witch from Mercury with a special login bonus. And another game celebrating which from Mercury is Gundam Arsenal Base, which is giving away a free Gundam Aerial Cart at places where you can play the arcade game. And then for SD Gundam Battle Alliance, we got the second wave of paid DLC. Included in it is the Knight Superior Dragon, the Moon Gundam, and its pilot Yuta Kashim. And of course, two new missions for these new machines. In other news then, Advance of Zeta has released some new variants of the Hazels, which I'm of course currently working on turning into a video. Kukuruzuwan's Island is now available on Japanese Amazon Prime. The Gundam Manhole Project has just announced that by the end of 2024, they want to have Gundam Manholes installed in 20 more towns and cities, and the life-sized Freedom Gundam in Shanghai is celebrating its first anniversary with a stamp rally that allows you to get a Freedom Gundam mask, beam saber balloon, and commemorative badge, and for the occasion they also have a new show for the statue, and allow people access to normally restricted areas. As for the things you could get this week then, on the 30th you could get the Gundam Base Limited High Grade, Full Armored Gundam vs Psycho Zaku Thunderbolt 10th Anniversary Set, for 6,600 yen, 45 US. A set that has a more subdued color scheme, and also comes with different marking stickers. One day later then, also from the Gundam Base, you could get the Action Base 5, which from Mercury Color, Although, in my opinion, it feels less like a general Witch from Mercury theme and more like the Begwer Bow custom because of its white and purple colors. But whatever the case might be, it goes for 770 yen, 5 US. And the people in China on that day 
could get the Figurei Standard Lacus Klein version GCP from the Shanghai Gundam base for 299 yuan or 42 US. Basically, it's a red version that also comes with some extra marking stickers. Continuing on with the limited stuff then, today at the New York Comic Con, you can get the limited edition Gundam Universe RX-78-2 Gundam and New Gundam Marking Plus version. They go for 35 US each and I absolutely love what they did with the RX-78-2's color scheme. It's still the traditional colors, but the red and the blue is more faded and the white now has a more brownish tint to it, which really does wonders to make the RX-78-2 feel more serious. Combine that with the more chonky proportions of the Gundam Universe figure, and this definitely makes for one of the better and more serious RX-78-2 figures that I've seen in quite a while. And also today, as I mentioned in the beginning, Gilles de Lanza got released ahead of schedule for 1760 n 12 US. As for this week's reading material then, there was the 20th volume of the Gundam Thunderbolt manga, the Gundam Thunderbolt Artworks art book, volume 16 of the Gundam Aggressor manga, the 6th chapter of Gundam sequel is now available online and linked down below, and it was announced that for the 20th anniversary of Seed, they'll be releasing a special two-volume set for a whopping 11,000 yen, 76 US. Volume 1 is named Freedom and contains a lot of side information, commentary, and promotional material, whereas Volume 2 is called Justice and contains these setting materials. Things like mobile suit and character profiles and production cells. These two will be bundled in a fancy box and are scheduled for an April release. And instead of now immediately going to the Gundam apparel news, we once again have some Gundam Cafe news. Because over at the Gundam Factory Yokohama, we have one final surviving straggler. And on October 1st, they started the Witch from Mercury Latte art promotion. You can get a regular latte or an ice latte decorated with one of the main characters, and if you order over 1000 yen worth of food, drinks, or items, you'll get a Gundam Aerial Coaster. As for the latte art then, um, the Gundam Aerial design is always available, but the human characters you can get uh, change from week to week. From the 1st to the 9th it's Suleta, from the 10th to the 16th it's Gule, from the 17th to the 23rd Elon, from the 24th to the 30th Shadik, and from the 31st to the 6th it's Miorine. So while I can't get a Suleta latte, I will be able to get a Miorine latte together with a Gundam Aerial latte. And a Gundam Aerial coaster. On to this week's Gundam Apparel then, where Strig G kicked things off with their Witch from Mercury collection, uh, which became available last week Friday, and where we got some really cool designs. For 4730 US, you could get a black t-shirt with an Astycasia or Suleta design, or a white one with Gundam Aerial design. Uh, for 5,830 N 40 US, you could get a white long-sleeved t-shirt with the Gundam Ariel's head and shield, or a black one with just the name of the Ariel. And for 9,130 N 63 US, you could get a black hoodie with the Astycasia emblem in the style of real-life universities and colleges, or a red one with AD Stella 122, which is of course the year when Witch from Mercury takes place. And on the same day, Bankure opened their pre-orders for a whopping 5 collections. With the most striking one, without a doubt being, the second volume of the Hyaku Shiki series. Featuring a black or yellow shirt for 3850 yen, 27 US, a cap for 4070 yen, 28 US, a dog tack with a long chain to use it as a necklace, and a short chain to use it as a keychain for 4180 yen, 29 US, a GI belt with Hyakushiki printed both on the fabric and the buckle for also 4180 yen, 29 US, and a very golden backpack for 17,600 yen, 122 US. 
The backpack is slated for a January release, with the rest already coming your way in November. And to keep things blingy, we have more Gundam jewelry. Kukuru's the Wand's Zaku's shoulder shield, which you can use as either a pendant or an interesting display piece with the included acrylic stand. And this set can be yours in December for 15,400 yen, 107 US. And to go along with that silver chain, you might want to get a new leather wallet from Gundam Seed. Or Zaft, to be specific. A big one sets you back 20,900 yen, 145 US, and a regular one 16,500 yen, 115 US. And for 11,000 yen, 76 US, there's also a business card holder, pass case, and ID card case. Each of them comes with a Haro keychain and will be releasing in January. Uh, the fourth collection then was the Shars Counterattack Track Jacket Collection, featuring either a sporty new Gundam or Sazbi style jacket for 9,350 yen each, 65 US, and I really like how you've got their personal emblem on the sleeves. And these can be yours in February. And then the last thing on Friday was the Mark Basic Line Collection, which consists very simply of apparel with the emblem of a faction or a pilot and the respective name on it. For 3,520 and 25 US, there is a Black Earth Federation, Khaki Principality of Zeon, Red Char Asnabal, Black Armro Ray, uh, Bordeaux Zeon uh, Neo Zeon, Grey Vist Foundation or Bordeaux Mafti Shirt which you can then pair with a cap for 3,960 and 28 US in the same styles and colors. Then on Sunday, they also launched a bunch of Witch from Mercury things, and they're focusing on the emblems of the different houses and their main pilots. For 3,850 and 27 US, you can either get a full color t-shirt of the promotional image, a t-shirt with the emblem of one of the three houses or the school, or a cap, also with the emblem of one of the three houses or an emblem of the school. And for 1,430 and 10 US, you can also get these emblems on a pouch. Then we've got our five main characters, whom you can either get on an acrylic stand for 1,100 yen each, 8 US, an acrylic keychain for 770 yen, 5 US, a face towel for 2,200 yen, 15 US, and a toad bag for 2,750 and 20 US. Uh, these items are currently slated for a November release, and there's currently also a campaign ongoing for an acrylic keychain for people who spent over 2,000 yen, 14 US. And finally then, today, pre-orders open for the Dom Day collection, which of course consists of a bunch of black TriStar themed items. There's two styles of t-shirt for 3,520 yen each, 25 US, a hoodie or zip-up hoodie for 7,700 yen, 53 US, two types of triple acrylic keychain for 935 yen each, 7 US, a triple dom acrylic stand for 1,980 yen, 14 US, a mug for 2,750 yen, 19 US, a two-way tote bag for 5,940 yen, 41 US, and a bath towel for 3,850 yen, 27 US. And all of these items will be jet streaming their way to you in November. And let's quickly wrap up this, again, quite lengthy Gundam news with some polls. First up, we have the results of what Shin's best quote was, and the final results ended up being pretty different from when I covered it. In first place, with 35.1%, was Do You Guys Really Want Another War? From when Shin swoops in with the Impulse Gundam during the Armory 1 incident. And this quote was only in third place when I covered it, so I'm really happy that it managed to make a serious comeback. Because out of the four, this is definitely the one that I most closely associate with Shin. In second place then, with 28.1%, we have you people. From seconds before his destiny, Gundam gets totaled by Atheron and the Infinite Justice. Like I said during my original coverage, 
it's pretty sad that your second most popular line is from when you're about to get owned in the final battle of the series you were supposed to be the main character of. And then in third place, we have the former leader with 24%. I'm going to defeat you right here, right now. Which of course comes from his battle with the freedom. And while I am happy that Do You Guys Really Want Another War came out on top, I would have expected this quote to at least be second. Again, especially because the second one right now is of when he got owned really badly. And then all the way in last place we have no matter how beautifully the flowers bloom, people will just blow them away again. The one that I voted for because I felt like it could use some extra votes. Despite being one of the deeper things that Shin said during the series, it only managed to garner 12%. So moving on to the currently ongoing one, which is very straightforward. This month we're getting the third lineup of the G-Frame Full Armor line, so they want to know which one we would like to get the most. And with only 85 votes at the moment of riding, the Gym Custom is in dead last place. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. But at least it is close on the heels of the Shining Gundam, which only has 86 votes. Uh, the current second place machine then is the Zaku 2 Kai, which is a bit more secure with 120 votes, but I still think it's within reasonable range of the gym custom, especially when you look at the big turnaround of the Shin Pole. And then in the lead is the Zeta Gundam with 179 votes, which, well, I'm not surprised about that. Uh, so if you want to vote too and help out the poor Jim Custom, I'll have the link down below. And that has been all for this week's Gundam News, powered by Hobbling Japan and their Halloween sale. Again, that link is also down below. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam news.